<coughs> this week in lab we are doing an electrophilic aromatic substitution. We're going to be putting on a nitro group onto the aromatic green. Let's first look and see how we're going to make our electrophile. We're going to make that with nitric acid and sulfuric acid. So of the two, we have two acids, of the two, nitric acid, uh, nitric acid is weaker than the sulfuric, sulfuric is stronger. Sulfuric acid has a pKa of minus five. Nitric acid, pKa of minus 1.3. So of the two, with the sulfuric being the stronger acid, it says, hey, I'm going to be the acid you have tells the nitric acid that you have to be the base. They can't both be the acid. So one has to be the acid, one has to be the base. So we know all acid-base reactions, the base goes and gets the proton off the acid. Let me just redraw the nitro group out so we can see it. So what get, goes and gets the proton, it is the OH oxygen. Any of the oxygen could do it, but if you use the OH, then that's going to give us a water molecule that is a good leaving group. Now, the water could leave off on its own or it can get a little bit of help from the oxygen with the negative charge. We can kick a pair of those electrons in to form a double bond and that helps push off the water molecule. So we get a water molecule that left off and we have made this species. This is called a nitronium ion. And this is our electrophile that we're going to be reacting with the aromatic green. Now the aromatic compound that we are reacting with this week is methylbenzoate. It's, it already has a substituent on the ring, so we know that the substituents already present on the ring will direct the next substituent as to where to go. <clears throat> you look at the atom that is directly attached to the ring, that is the one that's going to tell you the directing ability. This carbon that's, on, that's directly attached to the aromatic ring, there is partial positive charge on that carbon. If there is a partial positive or a full positive on the atom directly attached to the ring, then that's going to be a meta director. If the atom directly attached to the ring has a lone pair, in general that is an ortho pair director. So this is going to be a meta director. So the ortho positions are here, here are the meta, and here is the para. So we're going to react our nitronium ion is going to add to one of those meta positions. So we're going to take a, a pair of electrons out of the double bond. It's going to come out and add to that nitronium ion. To avoid breaking the octet rule, we'll kick a pair of electrons onto one of those two oxygens. It does not matter which way you go. So again, it's going to go in the meta position. Now, of the two carbons here in the double bond, one gets our electrophile, one is going to be left with a plus charge because the initial tail becomes more positive by charge, final head becomes more negative by charge. So one of those two carbons has to have a plus charge. 
So it goes to, we put the electrophile in the meta position, and then that will leave the plus charge there in the ring. Now we need to get rid of, we need to pull off the hydrogen off the carbon where we just put our electrophile because we need our aromatic ring back. We started with an aromatic and now we have made a non-aromatic. Now this is not too bad. This is an arenium ion. It's got lots of resonance that you can draw with the plus charge, but still more stable would be the aromatic ring back. <coughs> We're going to use, oh, let's put it down here. We're going to use water. We had the water as the leaving group there earlier. Water is the best base that we have in there. So the water is going to pull off that hydrogen off of the carbon where we just put the nitro group, where we just put our electrophile. Those electrons are going to kick toward the plus charge and form a double bond. And that gives us our aromatic ring back. So that's put our nitro group on, goes in the meta position, that's your major compound. You get a little bit that's ortho, a little bit that's para, but the major compound by far is going to be where it goes in the meta position. Now let's just take a look, so that's, that's our product this week. Let's just take a look at why this wants to go in the meta position. Let's go back to our starting material. So we said this was a meta director. Let's see why that's really a meta director. We can draw a resonance for this. And one resonance structure that you can draw resonance structure you can draw. You can take that charge on around the ring. We can draw another. And let's finish it out. We have one more resonance structure that we can draw. Now we know the real structure is a hybrid of all of our resonant structures. So if you look at a hybrid here in the ring, there are combination of all these, there's partial positive charges on the ortho positions and the pair position. So if we're reacting with some electrophile, that electrophile is going to be repelled by the two ortho positions and the pair position. So its only option is to go to the meta position. That's why this is a meta director. If you look at an ortho pair director, Ortho para puts partial negative on the ortho and the para position, so the electrophile is attracted to those. But the meta director puts partial positives on those positions, and that's going to repel the electrophile, so its only option is to go to the meta position. Now let's take a look at another meta director. A nitro group is a meta director. So if we were to try to put more than one nitro on, let's just take nitrobenzene here. Here's nitrobenzene. That is also a meta director. We see the atom directly attached to the ring. It has a positive or full positive or partial positive, then it's a meta director, and it's got a full positive. 
but we can draw the same type of residence. I'm not going to draw all of those. I'll draw one of them here. We can take it's going to take electrons out of the ring. So that's going to put positive charge into the ring. So there's one resonance structure you can draw and you can finish drawing out the others. So that's showing that there's going to be partial positive charge on the ortho and the pair position. So a nitro group is also a meta director. Now, our starting material is a methyl benzoate this week. That sulfuric acid will dissolve the methyl benzoate. Methyl benzoate is very soluble in sulfuric acid. Let's see why it wants to dissolve in sulfuric acid. So if you have sulfuric acid around, Anytime we have a strong acid, we always look for something to protonate. And we're going to protonate the carbonyl oxygen. Now to balance the charge out, there's HSO4 minus that balances the charge out. But what we've done is we've made a salt. We've protonated our ester group, made a salt. This is going to be soluble in sulfuric acid. If you take something that doesn't, that doesn't have uh, a lone pair that can be protonated, or a double bond, or triple bond, or something like that that can be protonated, let's say we have a hydrocarbon here, cyclohexane, that's insoluble in sulfuric acid because there's nothing that can be protonated. So this is insoluble in sulfuric acid, but our starting material this week is soluble in the sulfuric acid because it can be protonated. Hydrocarbons are not soluble because they have nothing to protonate. So they're insoluble in sulfuric acid. So let's take a look at our procedure. So you're going to take uh, the sulfuric acid, uh, says 0.6 mils in a reaction tube. You'll add the methyl benzoate, flick the tube to mix it. So that will dissolve, the sulfuric acid will dissolve the methyl benzoate there in step one. We're then, we're going to cool the mixture to <coughs> zero degrees. So that's just in an ice bath. And then you're going to add in a separate tube, you're going to mix 0.2 mils of concentrated sulfuric and 0.2 mils of nitric acid. That's going to make our nitronium ion. And then we're going to add that to our original reaction tube that has our starting material dissolved. So that will put the nitro group on. You can start adding. Now we're doing this cold because it's a very exothermic reaction and that's just to keep it from getting out of control and, and maybe boiling out and popping out some of our product. <clears throat> so after the addition is complete, you'll remove it from the ice bath, allow it to warm up to room temperature. That's going to take a few minutes, give it about 10 minutes to warm up. Uh, actually, it says 15 minutes in the procedure. Give it 15 minutes. And then at this point, we're going to pour it onto ice says approximately two and a half grams of ice in a small beaker. When you take the reaction mixture and pour it onto ice, the product will precipitate out. It's not soluble in water and it precipita precipitates out. Now, why are we pouring it on ice? Well, remember, we've got a huge amount of acid in there. Um, and you put acid into water, that's very exothermic, gives off a lot of heat. So we're going to pour it onto ice. So the ice will soak up the heat. It, the ice will melt as it absorbs that heat. So that's why we're pouring onto ice. So you should have all the ice will melt. You'll collect your product on a Hirsch funnel by suction filtration. And then you're going to wash the product well with water. And the reason we're doing washing it with water is to help get rid of any acid that's still on there. And then you will wash it uh, with a 
0.2 milliliter portion of ice cold methanol. Make certain it's ice cold. So we're washing it with ice cold methanol. That's to get rid of any unreacted methyl benzoate. That's very soluble in methanol. We want it cold because our product is slightly soluble in methanol, but if it's cold, it's not very soluble at all. So we need to make certain that it's cold. That will get rid of any unreacted starting material. So leave it on the funnel till it's fully dry. Just let the suction go across it. Let it pull air across it until it's fully dry. Then you're going to take and weigh your product, calculate a percent yield. Um, says get a melting point. Let's skip the melting point this week. So we'll skip that. We're going to take an IR spectra, but I also want to add to the procedure, I want to do an NMR spectra. So we're going to do IR and NMR rather than doing the melting point. We're going to add NMR. So we covered NMR uh, last week in lab, so we're going to get an NMR spectra on this product and you can discuss that, how the NMR spectra proves that we made our product. So I'll give you an NMR spectra of the starting material and then you can look at the NMR spectra of the product and talk about how it proves that we made that product. Now in the IR spectra, you are going to take an IR spectra and we've, we've not done an IR of a nitro compound but we did discuss it last semester so let's just review just a moment. A nitro group will show some very characteristic IR uh, stretches. We have a symmetric stretch. So you have a symmetric NO stretch that occurs about um, 1290 to 1360 reciprocal centimeters. Then there's also an asymmetrical stretch and that is about 1500 to 15. 50 reciprocal centimeters. So we're going to see two stretches, one for the symmetric and one for the asymmetric stretches. Now these peaks are very strong and they're typically some of the strongest peaks we have in the spectrum. The two peaks will be about the same size. So you have these two very big strong peaks that are sticking down. And we call this a nitro fang because it's got two peaks that kind of looks like fangs. So these are your nitro fangs. that are going to stick down. Look for those two peaks. That will help prove that we put the nitro group onto the aromatic green. Okay, so that's the lab this week. Again, we're taking an IR spectra and adding in the, uh, the NMR spectra as well. We are not going to do the mounting point this week. That'll save you a little bit of time. But we will take the NMR and IR.